This is talk about the enable Intel linear address masking in Linux. So, uh, in the Intel, in the future, Intel processors we are going to introduce uh, Intel LAM feature. It's called the linear address masking. Uh, basically, uh, we are going to use the upper bits of a 64-bit address for metadata. So we have two modes uh, in the user space. Uh, one is called LAMU48, and it's, uh, the other one called LAMU57. Uh, they are similar. The 48-57 indicate the uh, address bits, the lower address bits used for the address translation. So the upper bits are ignored in that case. So that's the basic features in the LAM. Uh, here we want to talk about how to enable LAM in Linux. So our so so we do we did a couple things here. Uh, the one thing we want is uh, we want the uh, uh, capability to enable LAM in the kernel. When we start application, uh, LAM can be enabled by default. So to do that, uh, we the uh, the kernel has to, and also the loader has, they have to know if LAM can be enabled safely because some applications may use upper bits for other purposes. So they cannot be uh, ignored uh, by the LAM, by the, uh, by the hardware. So to do that, we introduce a marker for LAM. Uh, the uh, LAM can only be enabled by default if all the components are marked as LAM enabled. And, and the same LAM marked ex executable and shared library can be used can be used on the processors without LAM support, they are, they are going to be uh, ignored, those markers. On the legacy processors, the LAM will not, of course, will not be available on the uh, legacy processors. And uh, the idea is the, uh, even if we enable LAM, uh, by default, there are going to be no performance loss just because the upper bits are ignored. Uh, in, to enable LAM in GCC, current usage, uh, the current usage for LAM is in the, GC, in the GCC is to use the LAM in the address, sanit hardware assist address sanitizer. And there are two pieces. One is we need to enable memory tagging in the X86 backhand. The other piece is to enable LAN in the hardware assist address sanitizer. So uh, we do that in the LVM repo because the uh, address center library upstream is in LVM. Uh, we introduce some linker support in the BUTL. It's, already, it's in the BUTL 2.37. Uh, we can mark the program in shared libraries. It's LAM enabled. Uh, it checks the marker in the input file, and also it has some uh, command line option to uh, to verify the marker and to gender a marker uh, if needed. Uh, so I think this one is has been under discussion for a couple of months, half, almost half year. 
Uh, so what we want is a couple things. We want to enable them in GDPC. We want uh, to have API to enable and disable them in the GDPC, not through the kernel interface directly for a couple reasons. Oh, there are, uh, so I should remove the memo comment because it's, it's not true. So the, uh, the, the issue is we can only enable LAN before threat creation. And also when LAN is enabled, we cannot disable it because the 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 pointers may have tags in the metadata, so uh, disable them will be wrong, and uh, those pointers becomes uh, invalid. So we do not want to. We I want to have a GDC to provide an interface to do that and instead of asking the uh, applications to check if LAM can be enabled or not. Uh, also, in the, it provides a way in the, for other application in addition to hardware assist address sanitizer, including GDPC to use LAM for its own use safely. And here is the kernel interface for LAM. It's different from the uh, uh, the ARM TBI interface. And so uh, the, the, the motivation is that we want to use the uh, marker uh, for the GNU properties. We have A6 feature marker. So we currently we have IBT and, and for indirect brand tracking and the shadow stack. And it introduced two more, LAMU48 and LAMU57. Uh, <clears throat> so the idea is kernel may enable LAM uh, by default. And it's, so we are not proposing we're going to do that today, but in the future, kernel can do that. And this is how uh, kernel will do it and through the uh, marker and it can check. And here is uh, kernel interface, basically rename the CT to just to the feature. And uh, so there's uh, one difference between the uh, uh, shadow stack and IBT uh, and the LAN, that is the shadow standard it can only be enabled by the kernel, nothing else. So the, uh, it can be disabled from user space, but it can only be enabled by the kernel. But for the LAN, the user space can enable that. So initially, implementation LAN will be disabled, and the, we have an API mentioned earlier to enable LAN. So the only the LAM bits are allowed in the enable interface. So the runtime, and here it is it's similar to CT, and basically uh, when LAMs enabled, the uh, we cannot disable LAM unless uh, it is marked as permissive. The, re the reason is once you have LAM enabled, we have a pointer already with the tag, and if we disable LAM, those pointers will become invalid. So, and here I want to say something about this. So the dynamic, the loader in the GDPC will be marked with LAM in compatible, enabled, but it will not use anything in the upper bit for the metadata in the loader. So they will work with the LAM both enabled or disabled. So we can disable LAM safely in the loader. 
because the loader itself will not use LAM, will not use upper bits for the metadata. And we have the GDPC tunables for LAM, and the, we can disable and enable LAM at the runtime, and uh, and we can change the behavior for the uh, for from the uh, make that permissive or not. And so most of the applications are LAM compatible because they are not use the upper bits for uh, for its own purposes. So basically you, you can simply mark them as LAM enabled. There should be no problem, but there are databases, applications, the uh, JavaScript VMs, the open the they are the the, open, the, the Java uh, JDK, and and also I, I was told um, HTTP servers they are using upper bits for for other uses. So those applications they must uh, update it to support LAM. So they cannot be marked as LAM enabled at all. So Mark is asked a question about the loader. Uh, so the quest, so here's the question, how does the loader know the program or some other library is, isn't using them already? So that is the, uh, the marker is for. So the developer application developer has to certify if the component is LAM enabled or not. So it's not compiler will not do that by default at all. So it's, it's a developer responsibility to mark a program is LAM enabled or not. So, and the loader will do the right thing depending on the marker. So, oh, it's a LAM not 2.37. So, sorry. So, so LAM has been enabled in BIM until 2.36. Uh, we're targeting GCC 12 for LAM support, and uh, so we're targeting GDPC 2.35, not 2.34 uh, for LAM support. And also, the pending is of the ABI. We have still under discussion. I understand foreign has some. Uh, concern about the API and uh, so and also the LAM API depend on CET, CET is still not upstream yet. Uh, so uh, it's still pending. And I think the, it's the, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the kernel status. So we have LAM patches, uh, but I, I would, La, I I want the LAM interface is based on the CET interface to get proper marker support. So this because of CET is still under review. We do not have a date for the LAM support in uh, in the kernel. Uh, okay, here is a call to action, and I want I would like to enable LAM in the uh, last remaining five percent the Linux OS, and uh, they are. So the missing part is the Rust, Go, and Chrome, Firefox, the end, the Java, and probably also HTTP server and other things I may, I may have missed here. Ah, okay, that's the end. So any comments, I'm reading the chat and... Uh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, oh, for the LAM status for hardware assist address and has that in the in GCC, uh, we have patches. So RVM has parcel support of LAM in compiler RT. There are some pieces are missing. They are in the uh, 
we put those missing pieces in the uh, lamb branch in GCC uh, for GCC. Uh, it's, so we run that under simulator for the uh, hardware assist. As soon as it has a test and the simulator, we got the same result as the, uh, at the TBI. So it's compiler and the runtime part is looking good. Uh, we are uh, waiting for the compiler RT support before we upstream uh, the uh, x86 backend support. So that so its compiler part is looking good. So we just need to resolve the one issue we didn't resolve is the, uh, uh, the API. Uh, Florian had a question. Yes. Um, so I think it's finally clicking for me. So your presentation has been a great help with that. Um, so the, the binary markup, I think it's not like, it's not really LAM related, but it says I support 56-bit uh, wide pointers or 64-bit wide pointers. So in the future, if there's uh, uh, with the, uh, the five level or six level or seven level page tables, we could just use the same information for giving out more, more address space to a process, I suppose. Is that? Yes. Yes, we can certainly. Oh, yeah, you are. So you are right. The marker can be uh, used to how many bits are supported for the address translation. Yes, we can say that. I think that's yeah, what I the think... LAM. Go ahead. The, so the, the masking is not the issue. It's more like uh, basically I truncate the pointers to 48 bits in my application. And then obviously it's not going to be compatible with LAM. And the marker says, no, I'm going to preserve the full 64 bit or I'm preserving at least 56 bits. Is yeah. that so? Yeah, so we so basically, uh, without markers, anything goes. So uh, the loader does not know anything about that. And the, with the marker, and the, say, for example, with the LAM U57 marker, and the, it's compatible, it means the application will not use the upper eight bits for other purposes. So the hardware can safely uh, ignore the upper eight bit, upper seven bit. Yeah, or we the implementation can, or GDFC could assume that these bits are preserved by the application. For example, by putting uh, the the size bin index into the upper yeah. bits for malloc. Yeah. It, it it doesn't have to be ignored. Uh, yeah, put. Ideally, it has to be ignored by the hardware, but that that is not really the point here. It's that the uh, the application promises to preserve those bits and not assume that they are zero. Correct. So the process, the application should not assume anything in the upper bit. It cannot touch the upper bit. Basically, cannot assume any meaning, particular meaning for the upper bit. Cannot modify or change upper bit. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like the lower bits, basically. I mean, a bit for, you can't change bit 40 at, uh, either, or bit 42 or whatever, that, that those yeah. bits are significant. Yeah. And, and, and then the, in the old ABI specification, um, uh, the PS ABI said uh, the pointers are only 48 bits significant or 47 bits significant. and and that is changing, and that's why we need the markup. So that that yeah that 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 that's, I need to look at your patch again based on this new understanding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, the 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 initial patch has made it only for the uh, the API, the header file, and not much else. And would you like me to? include all the rest of the uh, patches so that to really implement the things uh, mentioned in this presentation. Also, I believe you raised good concern that is the back backport 
back portable of the, 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 the thing. So the current API, uh, I put the, uh, there are only one, one function, okay? Just uh, set the uh, um, address mask. So this weekend for the initial one, probably is a good idea. And we put that in the, uh, in the libc non share so that it can be backported to the older uh, releases. And for the, for the future, if we're really comfortable, it is, we believe it's the interface we really want, we can move that into libc.so, uh, I mean the real one, so that we can, uh, we can uh, introduce the, uh, the new version. But initial implementation, I do see a benefit to uh, put that into libc non shared so that we can really at least we can use the lamp in the uh, address sanitizer and also make sure and in the future if we are going to use that in the glibc we will not cause uh, a conflict cause the uh, undefined behavior so that's i want to avoid no undefined behavior and if this uh, has been so for example if gdpc does want to use that feature feature in the future if it found out it has been enabled but say by the another library uh we can just say back off to not use that uh okay so Dimitri is asking the status feature status. So the GCs, as I said earlier, the GDPs, we do have a GDPC patch. Uh, the, the, the only one issue is uh, Florian raised the uh, concern about where we should put the initial one. I think libc non shared is a good, uh, is good suggestion. And for the GCC, we do have a backhand patches. But the problem is the yes, compiler RT. The, com the LAMP support in compiler RT is uh, incomplete. Uh, we have Intel has been trying to upstream the uh, uh, LAMP patches for compiler RT, but they are, I think it's in, in April, but it's still not done yet. Uh, if if uh, we would like to RVM community to comment on the LAMP patch so that it can be upstream in the compiler RT, then we can sync uh, sanitizer library with upstream, then we can, we can upstream the uh, 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 backhand patches. And for the QEMU and the kernel, and as I mentioned earlier, the interface still not finalized yet because of the current, my, my proposal depends on the CT patches. The CT, because the CT has not been upstreamed, we cannot uh, make final decision, decision on the LAM one. So all the pieces are there. I mean, the kernel, which is it's because of the CT is not upstream yet. So uh, it's kind of blocked by the CET. If the community can help to upstream CET patches, we can move the LAMP support. Uh, oops. So I, I lost the connection. Uh, no, you're fine. Oh, I'm fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So, all the patches are there. It's not exact. It, it's not exactly uh, uh, upstream ready, but it's uh, it's going in in the right direction. So, so we really need to appreciate. We can really appreciate the help from the. Uh, uh, from the community to upstream LAMP, especially for RVM. So RVM part is, is incomplete uh, because we depend on the compatibility library, so GCC is, is, cannot be finished. 
Thank you. Any other questions? We have another five minutes. Going once, nothing in the uh, chat. Going twice. All right, well, thank you, AJ. Thank you very much for your second presentation of the day.